Hello everybody and welcome to Total Security Solutions Live Fire product demonstration for government facilities. I'm Paul Levine, I'll be your host today. With me is Bob George, Senior Consultant with Total Security Solutions. In today's webinar, we're gonna do three parts. First part is gonna be some best practices for government facilities. Followed after that will be a Live Fire product demonstration and then we'll wrap up with a Q&A session. On your Zoom application, there's a Q&A button. Please go ahead and click that now and start entering your questions. Uh, if you get them in now, they'll be higher up on the list. Better chance of being answered. Uh, if we do not get to your question during today's webinar, we will follow up with you afterwards to make sure we answer them all. So Bob, will you tell us uh, for the LifeWire product demonstration, what product do we have here today? Sure thing, Paul. Okay, well, starting with this is all UL Level 3. Uh, components, uh, which is a three-shot test from a 44 Magnum or any handgun. Uh, this is the glazing here first. Uh, this, this is LP1250BR. Uh, it's an inch and a quarter thick. It's laminated poly over acrylic. Uh, over here, you have your ballistic fiberglass at a level three. This is a half inch thick as well. And then it's all encaptured here with the level three framing system that we offer, which is our BL1.75, which is an inch and three quarter by four inch tube with a two-piece channel system holding the glazing and the fiberglass together. And Bob, this is a, an aluminum framing system, right? Yeah, this is an aluminum uh, system which comes with uh, different finish options as well. All right, and like Bob said, we'll be approximating the UL752 level three test. Three shots on the glazing and three shots on the fiberglass. We will be using a 44 Magnum with a 240 grain round in it. All right. Um, as a note, you should have received this morning an email, and in that email you'll have our Bulletproof Systems Components Guide, as well as our UL752 Bullet Resisting Chart. Uh, they are great reference documents, and we'll be covering a lot of that information in the webinar today. All right, so Bob, let's go ahead and get started with the best practices. So I'm going to step off and take it away. Okay, thanks, Paul. Okay, just uh, in general for governmental facilities, uh, we'll kind of go through the whole U UL 752, which you know, basically covers all the levels of protection. Uh, UL level one is your lowest level of protection. Uh, that starts with small handguns, a three shot test, goes up to, uh, then there's level two, level three. UL level three again is strictly for handguns, covers all of them, another three shot test. Once you get over the UL level three, at that point, you are into high-powered rifles for UL's level four through eight, uh, which are typically, uh, you know, governmental facilities, usually not municipalities much, as more federal government type work. So touching base a little bit on the glass breakdown or glazing, uh, that we like to say within the industry, a uh, few different products that you can use. So starting with an interior, you can work off acrylics, polycarbonates, or glass products. Uh, starting with the acrylics, those go up to a UL level two, so you have levels one and two for those. We also have laminated polycarbonates that also go from levels one, two, and three. And then we have glass clad polycarbonate glazing makeups that, go, that start from a level one and go as high as a level eight. Once you get past UL level three, so you're talking UL level four and up, you're strictly into the glass clad polycarbonate products. The acrylics and the polycarbonates on their own won't get you to those testing levels. They're in some cases, they do make it, but it's really thick and basically unusable. So at that point, level four and up, you're with glass clad polycarbonate materials. Uh, those are for interior. For exterior, levels still apply. Uh, a few different products on the exterior. Typically, we would recommend a glass product on the exterior for obvious reasons uh, for the elements uh, for the, from the weather. Uh, we have a Defender insulated glass product that we use that goes up to a UL level one. We also have other glass clad polycarbonate products that I touched on before that start at level one and go all the way up to UL level eight. Uh, also, I touched base on the ballistic fiberglass that we show here. Uh, it's an unfinished material that again goes from level one to level eight, uh, varying thicknesses. Level eight starts at like a quarter inch and kind of goes up incrementally from there. Uh, that material is used for stud walls that you're gonna put drywall or sheetrock over. You could also use it in, within millwork uh, within like the little die walls beneath the counters, and you can use it even in the uh, countertops if you'd like, depending on how far you want to take the protection. Touching base on the framing systems. Again, we touched on this aluminum uh, level three system here. This will cover you from one, two, or three. Uh, we also have steel products as well. 
Uh, a different type of makeup of this one, a little bit thicker, deeper product. Uh, also, we can take that up from a level four, five, six, seven, or eight. And we have steel frames, stainless steel frames, but then we also offer non-rated versions of all these as well. Doors, uh, we offer a wide variety of products. We have aluminum, steel, wood, glass, and acrylic. Uh, aluminum typically is the most common, uh, especially for front entrances or the second entryway as you're walking into an office. Uh, our aluminum door products go up to a level five. We also offer steel, levels one through eight, wood, levels one through eight, glass, all glass doors, one through three, and then we offer acrylic or polycarbonate full vision doors as well, and those go up from one, two, or three. So as it relates to a governmental facility, typically you'll see maybe an aluminum storefront door in the front, possibly some more ornate looking wood doors throughout the office area. Sometimes at more of the high level offices, you may even see an all glass door to go into an office area as well. So just touch base as far as how it relates to the governmental facilities as well as the uh, glazing products and the type of transaction systems that we offer. Uh, as far as barrier lines, uh, we have the things to focus on if you're looking at it. Obviously, uh, you know, three things. How are you gonna communicate? How are you gonna pass products? And aesthetically, how's it gonna look? Uh, very important, voice transmission. Uh, there's all different types of little voice ports for the cost conscious, up to fixed window systems that you could use as well. Uh, arch windows, vertical baffle systems, horizontal baffles, secure sound. So all different types of makeups, uh, as well as amplified sound if that's necessary. If you have bigger products to pass, you know, we also have all types of deal trays that can be recessed into your existing counter or counter mount units. If you have bigger packages that need to be passed through, we have acrylic cube passers. Uh, we have one, units that you can put in the wall that have interlocking doors as well. We have horizontal sliding uh, window units that you could also pass bigger products through, uh, as well as uh, Lazy Susan type products if you had to pass you know, certain types of things depending on what your facility is and what you're uh, dealing with. So from there, uh, I think I'm gonna turn it over to Paul again. And All right. go from there. Thank you, Bob. Thanks, Paul. Okay, just a reminder, use the Q&A button to start submitting your questions. Uh, we're gonna now move into the live fire product demonstration. So our range master is going to step into the scene here, and Bob and I are going to step off while the shooting goes on. All right, thank you. We appreciate that, Range Master. Um, Bob's gonna step back into the frame here and he's gonna talk about how the product performed and we're gonna switch to another camera too so that you'll be able to see a close up. Take it away, Bob. Okay, uh, you can see here the triangle pattern which is typically what the testing agencies do. Uh, usually it's a three shot test in a triangle from a certain distance away and you can see that the bullet did get through the polycarbonate, which slowed it down, but the acrylic catches the bullet. Uh, really, there was no ricochet whatsoever, it encapsulated it. Same thing here with the ballistic fiberglass material. Uh, no, there was no, absolutely no penetration, but you don't see there's, there's no uh, deflection coming back. Everything was encapsulated in the fiberglass. Let's take a look back here, which is probably the most important part. You can see on the fiberglass, absolutely zero penetration. A little bulge, which is expected from the velocity, but obviously you can see here, there's no penetration of the bullets. And then here with the laminated polyacrylic, same thing. You can see that it cut through the poly, but the acrylic caught it, and then the poly absorbs it from there. Absolutely no penetration on these. And again, this is the minimum of what it needs to stop, and you can see there's no penetration here, but this could probably take even more bullets than this. Uh, from the material. 
but you can see right there, it really held up quite well. Framing system held up as well in the system, which is what we're looking for. All right, thank you very much, Bob. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Paul. Appreciate you walking us through that. And yeah, uh, impressive. Uh, I've been shooting these webinars for a while and uh, done a lot of live fire product demonstrations. And every time the product holds up, you know, just excellently. All right, so let's switch over and we'll start to answer some questions. So Bob, we're gonna start with, uh, what is the most common UL level you find used in government facilities? Keep in mind that could be anything from a township to sure. a city to a county, state, and federal. Yeah, really it just depends on the budget and the money allotted for it, but most of the time you'll see either a UL level one up to a UL level three. Uh, typically, municipalities like local governments, uh, you'll see at least a level one, but a lot of times they'll try to get to that level three rating because that stops all your handguns. That way you don't have to worry about what possibly someone could be walking in with. You know you're covered for every type of handgun there. So I would say UL level three is probably the most common, but also you might see on some federal government projects. Uh, you may also see them go up to a UL level four or a five once in a while, but those could be like border patrols, type Homeland Security, work maybe at, at, you know, at the Capitol. But typically, UL level three is the most common if you're cost conscious, but you just want some sort of deterrent, level one would be sufficient. So that's the UL levels. How about the actual product? The, you talked about acrylic and laminated polycarbonate and glass clad polycarbonate. Sure. So level one is strictly, you've got acrylic and there's a, a thinner LP product like this at three quarters of an inch. Uh, level one acrylic, Typically is where people go, it's less expensive, very common, holds up quite well. Uh, for the level three version, there's not an acrylic on its own, so you'll strictly be in the laminated poly uh, glazing series. And there's two types. There's an all laminated polycarbonate, and then there's this product that we use, which is an acrylic poly. And the difference between the two, this version with the acrylic is much clearer, uh, it's less expensive, and it holds up just fine. Uh, the all laminated poly has a little bit higher of a forced entry rating to it because it's all polycarbonate. Mm -hmm. However, it's more expensive, typically around $10 a square foot more, and it has, has a purplish gray hue to it when you're looking at it. So I would say this is the product to stay with at a UL level three. Now, if you went up to a level four or five, then you would be in the glass clad polycarbonate ranges which is fine, but then you do run into some limitations when running using glass with certain counter systems. Uh, they can get more expensive, harder to work with, they're thicker, they're heavier, so you have to make sure that your millwork and the walls adjacent can handle the additional weight. So just something to consider, because this is a lot uh, lighter than a glass clad product. It's almost half the weight. Uh, now you had mentioned this is the our LP1250 product, and it is UL ballistic rated, but it is not you know, we don't test it for forced entry um, for a number of reasons, Correct. but I can share with everybody. Um, I have at a live uh, in-person demonstration, we've shot the 1250 and then afterwards I've taken a two pound sledge hammer and just beat on it and beat on it and beat on it until I got tired. Um, so, you know, eventually you'd be able to make your way through, but the laminate polycarbonate product is really stands up. Yeah, that. it holds up. All right. Um, if you're talking about, so this question is about main entrances, so like mm -hmm. that entry vestibule and front windows, if you will. Mm -hmm. What type of UL level and product uh, do we recommend? I would recommend going with the UL level three. Uh, as far as a reception area or a vestibule area where you're checking people in, I'd recommend this product, the LP1250BR, and then you want some sort of rated framing system. And the, the components for our level three system kind of all go together. It's the the BL 1.75 aluminum frame, which is this. It also has a two-piece channel system on its own. So for counter areas where you don't really need a big bulky frame, you can just go with the channel system, which looks similar to this, but hard to tell because the tube frame's on it. But typically on a counter area, you would just see the two-piece channel system that goes with this. And then also as it relates to the door, the door system, which is the BL 1.75 full vision aluminum door, uh, would be the product you would typically use for that as you're walking in. Uh, you can put in a wood door in the aluminum framing system if you'd like, but typically most like to stick with the aluminum door. And there's, like I said, there's different finishes that you can get with this. 
Uh, so there's no really limitation as far as what you can use. We can do narrow style, wide style, and it fits all t different types of uh, uh, door hardware. So if you know, talk to one of our experts, we can walk you through any issues you might have in putting that together. Okay. Uh, next question is, do we have an exterior rated pass-through, for example, like they would have in a you know, a teller window or something, sure. but exterior rated. Yeah, absolutely. There, we have a handful of them. Uh, there is the Rotary Lazy Susan, which is a stainless steel unit that's only exposed on one side at a time with a little uh, lock on the top. Uh, there's also the, the steel or stainless steel package passers uh, that are typically like a, a flush panel door. You can put a little window in there, which has interlocking doors again, so that somebody couldn't grab you as you're opening your side. It automatically locks. So we have those two. And then there's all types of transaction drawers that you can put on an exterior wall as well, and there's just a wide variety of those depending on what you're trying to pass. Okay. Next question uh, relates to municipal offices uh, where you have like a treasurer's desk or window and then the clerk's counter top there. Um, what type of system and products do you typically uh, see us installing for this? Sure. So for uh, a teller line like that or a counter line, and as it ties into maybe the, uh, the other person's desk, again, you know, level one, you would just go with an acrylic material uh, or our LP1250BR, and there's all types of counter lines that we have as far as the teller lines. And I mentioned a couple earlier, our vertical baffle system and our arched window system are the two most ideal systems that we offer. They're both fixed window systems, but they have the best sound transfer. Uh, aesthetically, there's limited visual obstructions around there. Sometimes with the little voice ports, they can get in front of you and it's hard to see. Uh, with these systems, there's not as many visual obstructions. It's easy for the cameras behind you to see anybody who could possibly walking in that could be suspicious. Uh, and also, aesthetically, they look the best out of all the systems that are out there. Okay. This question is, uh, what UL level is needed to protect against a rifle shot? They don't specify what caliber rifle, sure. but so assume Low power to start. Yeah, well, uh, it starts at UL level four and goes up from there. Uh, UL level four stops a 30 out six. It's a one shot test. Uh, UL level five is the uh, 7.62 round one shot test. And then from there, level six and Uzi test, which is pretty uncommon in our industry. Uh, I think level seven is the 5.56 round. Mm -hmm. And then level eight then is a kind of a repeat of level five. It's the 7.62 round, but stops five shots. So starts at level four, which is one of the harder tests to pass because of the velocity uh, and the weight of the ammunition. But typically you'll see level four or level five. Most people don't go higher than five for a handful of reasons. Again, you're in glass products strictly, so it's a glass clad polycarbonate. Uh, the glass starts to get heavy. It's thicker, so the clarity is not as good. Uh, you also have limitations with counter systems, like when I referenced the vertical baffle and arched window. A much easier process when you're working just with plastics when you're uh, polishing edges or drilling holes. But when you do it with glass, it's much more difficult, less forgiving if there's any mistakes made in the field. You can't cut it. Mm -hmm. uh, the polishing comes with a charge. The hole cuts come with a charge. So, and then again, the weight, making sure that your millwork can support the glass that you're putting in there. So there's a lot of factors to consider once you start getting over, but we do have a full range of products that protect from all those rifle rounds. Okay, so this question is very similar, but the question is, what about shotguns? Uh, we don't see a lot of shotguns, actually. I mean, is that, uh, I mean, your experience, typically, what do you see as far as products? I don't think the testing from levels one to eight state shotgun protection. No, the levels one through eight are all handgun and rifle shot. High-powered rifles. So, I mean, basically shotgun, obviously, you've got a load uh, with buckshot or whatever. So you're going to see same kind of protection. It's just going to be different patterns here on that. All right, next up. Uh, this question is relating to the whole uh, beginning of the process is, do you do consulting for, you know, government offices or municipalities, a clerk or whatever that's like, all right, I know I need to do something, but what can I do? What are my options? So does Total Security Solutions consult? Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, we kind of pride ourselves on that, uh, getting ahead of it. Uh, we welcome the calls to come in so we can help, you know, understand what your needs are, how your office area functions, and then we can make recommendations as far as what would work best as far as, you know, the level of protection, uh, you know, how you're going to want to communicate with people, 
if you're going to have to pass products, is there a door necessary? Do you want to protect your millwork with the ballistic fiberglass? You know, it doesn't always have to be new construction. A lot of the stuff can be post applied and then covered. You know, we can cover this with a laminate or a veneer. Uh, new construction, it's easy to do. It goes in the studs. But yeah, we actually welcome uh, getting in at the ground point, you know, and being able to work with you on design, understanding what your needs are, and then delivering on that. A lot of times if we get involved too late, then it's hard to make changes, obviously, because a lot of people might have in their mind something they want done. They could have gotten some bad information initially. So we actually welcome getting those calls so we can help walk through. And we do site visits all around the country. Um, depending on the project, we can install anywhere within the U.S. We have offices uh, spread out all across the country. So yeah, we, we'd welcome the, uh, the call. Okay. Well, you just touched on the follow-up question here, which was, do you do on-site assessments and consulting? Yeah, we do. I mean, a lot of it can be done over the phone with just a few pictures. We can walk you through the stuff that we need, but if it's the part where it's not as cut and dry um, of an opening or an area, we can set something up to come out and, uh, you know, for certain projects and, and visit and walk you through possibly what you need to do. So what I'm hearing you say is that for uh, consulting side of things, you can probably do a lot of it over the phone, sharing pictures and whatnot. Um, how about when it gets to the point of actually needing to put together a true price quote? Sure. Do you come out there and like do measurements on site to make sure it's perfect? Well, we go out a couple ways. We can get at least pretty close to the number based on the information we get from you on the phone with a few photographs and basic dimensions. They don't have to be you know, to the eighth of an inch. Uh, we can get you some solid budget numbers to see if, whether it falls into your uh, your budget or not. And from there, if it's something that you think is gonna go through, we're more than happy to come on site, do some accurate measurements, make sure there's nothing we're missing, and then really finalize that number. And then if we end up, you know, if we all agree on everything, we end up moving forward, we would then send out our fabrication team to get the accurate, you know, the very accurate measurements uh, for fabrication at that point. So, absolutely. Okay. All right, um, another question in the same realm is, uh, how do you collaborate with architects during the design process? Again, kind of a couple questions ago, same process. You know, we deal with a lot of architects, uh, the, me especially, uh, I deal with quite a few. Just really kind of going and understanding the project, and what their needs are. Uh, I welcome talking to architects before specifications are sent out for bid, because at that point, as many architects know, it's a little bit too late. You can do RFIs, but if you're not in on the ground working on the design, not as much specifying, say, a specific product, but truly understanding, okay, what works with what? Because a lot of times we'll get specifications, we haven't spoken to an architect, and they might say, hey, I need this product, then it might not exist. So at least we can hash all that out up front, and we welcome it for projects that are going to happen with three months, a year, two years, five years down the road. We'd, you know, we'd rather, like I said, get in on the ground and work okay. with them on the design. All right, so that's the front end of the process. Now let's move to the back end. After it's been designed and the system spec'd out, it's engineered and all of that, um, I know that we ship an awful lot of product to locations where a glazer or a general contractor will do installation. But um, for certain jobs, does Total Security Solutions also have installation teams and offer insula installation? Absolutely, yes, well, we welcome that as well, um, depending on the project. Uh, we're more than happy to give an install number. Uh, we are a non-union shop, but however, we do most of our work, we can do around the country. And uh, yeah, we love getting out there. And that way, you know, sometimes it cuts out some of the middle people and maybe additional costs that aren't necessary. If you can work with us directly, uh, we have the capabilities to do a lot of the work ourselves. So depending on the project uh, and how detailed it is, you know, we can offer you a full turnkey solution from helping with the design, providing the material and then also installing it okay. from the back end. Um, but I will stress, we do a, a, an awful lot of work with the glazers and the G GCs and that. So typically it's a hand, very much a hand in hand process there. Um, another question uh, regarding construction time. The person asks, how long does my building need to be a construction zone? Uh, not long. Obviously, it depends on the extent of the work you're having done, but as it relates to what TSS provides, you know, we can be in and out in a day. Uh, it depends. I mean, we can work during the day. However, most of our projects that we do installations on are typically after hours. So if it's during the week after hours or on the weekend so that your business isn't being disrupted. Uh, but yeah, we, you know, we'll come in, you know, it could take more than maybe a couple days, but we'll work with you on the construction schedule. 
you know, we would never leave your place not put back together. Obviously, we want to make sure that you can operate the next day. So if the public's coming in, as it relates to governmental facilities or even a private business, you need to be operational and functioning. So we understand that that's part of our core business, you know, working on after hours and making sure that everything's put back together the next day. So no more than usually a couple days, depending on the size of the project. Yeah, absolutely. Um, one thing that I'll point out for you is on our website, um, in the upper right hand corner, you'll see a menu item called resources. If you click on that and go into the video gallery, um, scroll through, you'll find a time lapse installation video uh, showing just that. It's an overnight install. So you'll see them uh, bring everything in, assemble everything, clean it, and be out by the time the sun comes up. So again, on the website, resources menu, video gallery. All right, uh, next question here is uh, do you work nationwide how about Canada we provide material so we can furnish to Canada I don't think we've installed in Canada as of now but I can't imagine if we looked into it that we couldn't mm -hmm. um, so yeah I, I don't want to say no right. uh, I just can't we haven't done anything recently that I can think of over so in for Canada the scope of projects that we do it all and then we collaborate with the GC or Glazer um, is that nationwide absolutely okay and then uh, I know we've also certainly gone down uh, beyond the nation borders. Yeah, no, we do work in the Caribbean, and we've gone all the way down to Aruba, St. Kitts, Bahamas, Jamaica. So we've done installs there as well. I know uh, by mapping it out, there was even one in Guam. Yes. So way, yep. way out there <laughs> on that. Okay, here's another interesting question is, um, you talked about all the ways to protect people in the front lobby and all of that. Um, how about once you're beyond the front lobby of a municipality or a federal building or state, whatever, um, what can you do for people at their workspaces um, in the way of an active shooter? Sure. Yeah, and, well, that's big now. Um, creating, you know, either an area at your desk where they could put the ballistic fiberglass on it so you're protected. I've seen that on projects where they'll actually harden the desks that you're working at. God forbid there was uh, an active shooter that comes in that you could duck down. But a lot of times you're seeing in governmental facilities and even private corporations are designating an area within their office as a safe room so people can get to. And basically they could take a conference room that they know they can fit everybody in, uh, go in there, line the walls with this ballistic fiberglass material, then cover it with drywall. I've seen them post apply it and then paint it, whether it's a veneer over this or a laminate to match the, the paint colors. Then they also will work on the door as well. We can put a ballistic wood door that literally blends into all the other doors within the office. Again, whether it's a veneer or plastic laminate. And if something happens, they're able to get to that office, lock it down with a specific lock. It could be electric strike, mortise lock set with it as well to make sure they're 100% secure. And then all four of the walls are protected with this material. And they have a safe haven until somebody's able to get there, get first responders and take care of the situation. Okay, so it's not just the the executives or the council chambers, but the whole staff can benefit. Absolutely, like it should be. All right, a good point. Uh, we already talked about working overseas. And uh, back to the lobby, uh, what can you do? Uh, we talked about clerks and treasurer's desks and that, but how about uh, larger lobbies where there's a security or a help desk? What have you, what has TSS done for that? Well, there's a few, few different ways. Uh, so if you're focusing on the interior and say that there's a uh, security desk that's monitored by a guard at some point and they're, check, they're checking it out. Um, typically what we'll do, I mean, you can do a completely enclosed system vestibule that you can see on our website. Um, or sometimes the guard just wants something that's up maybe off his desk, you know, a couple feet, you know, maybe a foot to two feet tall so that they have protection so they can drop down and we've been able to build complete turnkey solution with the entire millwork, the countertop, the platform, the door, and the glazing so that they're raised up, they can see who's coming in, and they can store all their monitors. Um, you know, that, it doesn't have to always go to the ceiling, so if it's a standalone off to the side, there's ways that we can make that work as well. And then also too, you know, if you're looking to protect the exterior as, as well, you know, you don't have to replace the glass and the frames. A lot of times you'll just be able to pop out the glass and there's a few different ways that we could replace the glass for you or even put in a back glaze system and put ballistic glass behind your uh, insulated non-ballistic glazing. Excellent. All right, we are at our time limit. So I do want to thank everybody for attending today. 
And if you will, uh, about a week from now, watch your email. We'll send out a notice that has a link to this recorded session, because we have been recording it, so that you can rewatch it. Um, but we'd also ask you, please share it with other coworkers who weren't able to attend today. And again, if there's any unanswered questions and you've submitted who your name is, we will follow up with you. So thank you very much for attending. We appreciate your being here. Bob, thank you for being here too. Great, thanks Paul, thank you.